Yo, it's been a long week. SEC Media Days down in Alabama. FTP was on hand. If you were following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you knew that already. But we'll talk SEC Media Days. We'll talk plenty more. Stick around. I got all that coming up. It'll be fun. This, this is the FTP Podcast. All right, SEC Media Days. Let's talk football. All right. There were some interesting comments along the way. There were some interesting shoe attire. There was a lot to go on. And it, the question is, where do we start? Um, let's go ahead, throw some of the more interesting comments together just from a couple of people. So that way you can get a grasp of what was said. Coach, you talked about the defensive improvements you guys want to make this year, but what about on the offensive side? What are some things that you came away from Mm -hmm. into your evaluation saying we need to do much better at this? Well, if you look at the statistics, which don't mean a lot, but it sort of tells you where you need to get better, I guess. Uh, uh, Defensively, we gave up uh, more yards and more points than any team ever, and offensively, we were the second best ever to the team the year before. Uh, when Connor Shaw played and, and led us to that 11 and 2 year. Uh, but we got some new players. We got some new players. Uh, John Hope involved heavily as defensive coordinator with Lorenzo Ward. And uh, I think some new defensive linemen are really going to help help our defense. Domestic violence uh, mm-hmm. has hit college football and NFL. How do you personally uh, teach your players? Um, or do you have like guests to come by and speak about it? Or do, or do you have like a certain day or a week that you talk about that? Well, first of all, there's no absolutely no place for it. And since day one at Tennessee, we've worked extensively to have a year-round training program called our Personal Growth and Development Program. And we call what we have fourth and one Wednesdays, where life is like fourth and one when it comes to decision-making time. So we spend an inordinate amount of time on it. Can we always do better absolutely but it's trying to teach your players to have the proper habits the decision making process and we talk about all the issues right now that are surrounding college campuses on a daily basis hey kevin one of the clear improvements your program's made is when it comes to off-field situations i mean hardly a whimper when it comes to all that we haven't we haven't seen a lot of your players in the news when it comes to that what changes have you guys implemented what methods that's made such a big difference so fast well, as you hear me knock on that wood, uh, don't say, it's kind of like pitching a no-hitter. You're not supposed to say anything about that. <laughs> so, no, we, you know, we've talked in the offseason. Again, it gets back to the, the question earlier. You know, we're always evaluating everything. And, uh, you know, our evaluation process has changed uh, during recruiting. Uh, I think we've been more se- selective. Uh, than maybe we were at the beginning uh, when we hit the ground running, trying to just just trying to get guys in here. Didn't have relationships uh, with 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 players that we have right now, three four years in the program, knowing them as freshmen, knowing their coaches, knowing everything. Um, so our evaluation process has changed. Um, uh, there, our educational process has changed. Uh, you know that the hiring of Mikado Henson. Uh, and, and our whole development, developmental uh, educational process uh, that really has nothing to do with football but everything to do with life uh, and, and, and expectations and, and setting standards and keeping pressure on each other, um, not just when the coaches are around, but uh, you know when what real leadership is on and off the field and they're young men you know and, and sure there's uh, things have gotten better but we always have our challenges you know whenever you got 105 guys you know there's <laughs> there's always that worry when you, you you lay your head down on the pillow at night but uh, um, you know I, I think that yeah, we've made a concerted effort to uh, take things in another direction and, and uh, as you said you know I think uh, um, our, our players are listening. Does that mean that uh, nothing's ever going to happen? I, I don't know about that, but uh, obviously there's there's been a change. Julian, you played at Brother Martin down in New Orleans. How big is the uh, game with LSU? Uh, you know, it's very big. You know, I, I grew up with a lot of those guys. I grew up seeing purple and gold every single year, and uh, you know, I decided to head to Texas. So whenever I get to go back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or play the purple and gold, I'm always excited. 
And then Coach Saban said earlier that you had told him that you never thought you would make it here. Um, I guess in regards to some of your struggles earlier in your career, was there a low point for you, either from the time you were temporarily away from the team or after the injury last year? Just add, maybe add some context to that statement you told him. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm just very humble by the opportunity to be here um, in this situation. Um, and, you know, I meant it that even in the you know decision process, I felt like not necessarily I would be the last person that he would choose to come here, but I never thought that he would make that decision. And I really you know tackled this opportunity you know um, head first because I knew that this would be a great opportunity to um, help promote the team this year heading forward into this season and to personally you know go out there and you know put a brand out there for me because of the situations that I've had in the past and to understand that now that I am a senior and I am in a leadership position now that I can continue to progress and mature as a man on and off the field. You've had this run of 10 win seasons going back to 2008. Is it possible as long as the guys buy in, prepare the right way to never really have a down season? At Alabama. <laughs> Did you hear the story I told in the other room? Now I was at the lake this summer and we're having we're eating at the marina, which is just a hamburger place called La Prad's. And it's in Georgia at Lake Burton. And the nicest couple, I mean the nicest older couple you're ever going to meet, come up and say, we're Alabama folks. We graduated from Alabama. Would you take a picture with us? So I said, sure, I'd love to. So I get up and take a picture with them. And um, you know, when that's all over, nicest people in the world, the lady who is elderly puts her hand on my shoulder and says, maybe we'll win next year. So do you think we can have a bad season in Alabama? Coach, fun question for you. Are you a Michael Jackson fan, and are you aware that somebody drew <laughs> you as him on the yeah, Thriller oh cover? Yeah, I'm sure. That, no, I'm, I am certainly a Michael Jackson fan. Everybody is a Michael Jackson fan, aren't they? Um, but uh, um, I don't necessarily think they did him any service that they put my, my face on his body. So, boy, Lord, how wonderful that is. All right. So. Now, SEC Media Day for me, I, I, there's a lot of football talk, but it's more about the side stories. I mean, you saw like Mark Rick's new haircut. Jenkins was the best interview of the week for me. <laughs> he was funny, witty guy, love his personality. Great guy. He had some good stuff for us. But, all right, I'm going to take a second. We're going to talk football. Now, I don't know how, you know, oh, where to really start with this. When you start looking at SEC football, Every team is good. One team that's been on the watch and on the rise for a couple of years, Tennessee. And now they got Dobbs in place. And Dobbs is going to be one of the smartest quarterbacks in college football. The kid is just intelligent. So on the field, last year his product spoke for himself. So you put him in place, he, they have a pretty solid quarterback situation. You can understand why a lot of people like this Tennessee team. I'm one of the ones that believe that if they weren't in the SEC, their record would have been much, much better last year. But being in the SEC, obviously things are a little bit tougher to get some of those wins. Now, um, one school that does scare me with their situation right now is Alabama. Their quarterback situation is a little shaky. There's a lot of changes on that team. But what year isn't there a lot of changes going on in Alabama? They're football factories. Just like LSU, just like Auburn, you lose a lot of guys when you're good. It just happens. Good players go to the NFL, get paid good money. It's what they do. So when you look at the SEC, you got to start asking yourself, who is the creme de la creme? Who can rise to the top? Pressure makes diamonds. And we have a bunch of good schools all vying for this opportunity to come out on top. I really like Auburn. I really like Auburn. What they bring to the table. I love Gus Malzahn's offense. I think he is a mastermind. And I think we're going to see some good things from them. <sighs> Getting Muschamp in on that defense, I, I think that's going to be a scary good team this year. I think they are going to definitely give some people some things to be afraid of. I think LSU is going to 
Just, I'm not saying that LSU has, because I, I, they don't have a quarterback in place. Uh, their defense will probably be pretty good, but obviously there's some changes going on over there, defensive coordinator situation that we've talked about previously. But what I think is their ability is that they have Fournette, who even as a freshman, once he started rolling, he started rolling. Now you're giving him a second year coming in now. You're talking about he's been in the program, been in the building. He's felt game speed at the college level. There's a reason that coming out of high school, this kid was looked at as the next Adrian Peterson. The boy can play. So given, when you have a player of that caliber and a team that historically has the ability to put together a good defense, more than likely they're going to be extremely competitive. Plain and simple. So I really like those two right now. Um, A and M, jeez, I I do I, I you know I'm an Aggie guy. I, I give me some Aggie football. I can I can get with it. Sumlin is one of the best coaches at the collegiate level, so they're definitely going to be competitive. I'm not high on Florida. I think Ole Miss will be middle of the road. Um, I think Tennessee has a great opportunity. I'm not seeing a lot from UGA. I think they may be fun to watch. I do like Chubb, but I just uh, that quarterback situation seriously scares me for them. And UGA, I, I try, I just believe in not believing in UGA because whenever they get your hopes up, they always find a way to let them down. So I, I, I believe that they'll do that. That's what I believe in them for. So <laughs> South Carolina, I don't think they have the, the talent in place. So really when it comes down to it, I think you're looking at what, four teams that it's really going to be out of? I think we're talking about LSU. We're looking at Auburn here. Um, I think A&M has an opportunity. And Tennessee. So I think those are going to be your four that you really need to watch to come out of the SEC because I think they have the, the talent in place. Now, obviously, I left Alabama off that list because I think partially just with Saban being on hand, you don't even need to mention them as a contender because you know they're going to be a good team. I just don't really believe, I, I, I know they will be good. And, you know, just as much as everyone else starts to hate when teams are consistently good, I do too. So I want them to lose because I get sick of that, you know, God, over and over and over. Alabama's number one. Not that I really have anything against Alabama. Roll damn tie. But. You just get tired of hearing the same thing over and over. I want a new storyline. How about the storyline that Nick Saban couldn't bring Alabama to get going this year? I like that storyline. Let's try that one on for size. But I think they have a lot going for them. I'm just waiting to see the results of that quarterback battle for them. That's my real question mark there. All right, that's your little snippet, snippet look at the SEC. Obviously, we didn't get too in-depth because if I get rolling on it, we're going to be here all damn day. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk some paydays in the NFL. Stick with it. This is the FTP Podcast. All right, we saw a couple of guys get paid in the NFL. Des Bryant, Demarius Thomas, both got big paydays. A couple of weeks ago, we first started talking about this. I told you it was a game of chicken. Somebody was going to lose. Both teams were staring at their wide receiver saying, you're going to get first. No, you're going to get first. And just like I said a couple of weeks ago, when one gave, the other one came at the same time. Say both signed the deal. Same day, very similar deals. It was a game of chicken between the agents and the team. Plain and simple, no one wanted to lose. Now, the question is, who really got the better end of these deals? I mean, I don't think the players did too bad. I think really, um, I think it was a pretty... Neither wide receiver really got a, that exuberant money that was definitely an option for them. So I don't think the teams did too bad on their end. Do I think paying a wide receiver that much money is conducive to building a Super Bowl roster? No. But but you obviously don't want to lose a top-tier talent like a Des Bryant. I definitely believe that. You do not want to lo- let a top-tier talent walk out because of something like a few dollars. Uh, Cameron Hayward got paid by the Steelers. That's a good good pay for them, keeping the D-end around. Old Hammerhead's son. That's not bad. Now, what the real topic here for me is, now that Des and Demarius have gotten paid, what's going to happen with Julio and AJ? 
because they're the next big ones on the list. Now, I think definitely Dez and Demarius's contracts have laid the groundwork for these deals, but are we going to be looking at two guys that are going to try and get paid more? Obviously, because paydays go up every year. It's just like with quarterbacks. <laughs> we, for a couple of years there, every offseason, we had a new highest-paid quarterback in NFL history just because, you know, that's what you want to do. You're like, well, he got paid last year. I'm getting paid this year. I want to be the guy now. So, obviously, you're trying to get your money. Get your money where you can. So, I think, do I think Julio's worth money? If When Julio is healthy, he is a dominant wide receiver. Plain and simple. The boy can stay healthy. He's definitely top tier. So, yeah, he's probably going to get a deal very similar to theirs. Very similar. A.J. Green, same thing. When healthy, he is very dominant. I almost would like to see what he could do with a quarterback with more of a cannon for an arm. Because Andy Dalton, while passable, while qualifiable, while decent, he ain't no gunslinger. I I want A.J. Green in an offense with somebody that could just sling the rock. I don't care if you could throw it underneath. I just want a gun. He throw that 50-yard bomb and just let A.J. go figure it out. I like that. That's what I want to see. I won't, But, you know, if Cincinnati has any kind of sense, there's no way they let A.J. Green get out of that building. Just me. Could be crazy. But that's what I'm calling right now. All right. We're winding down on time as usual. Once things start heating up, the time just evaporates. All right, time for our moment in sports history. In 1927, Ty Cobb got his 4,000th hit in Major League Baseball. 4,000? All right, thanks again for listening. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Type in from the press box, pretty much will pop up. We got something big we're working on, so it's coming. Be on the lookout. We'll let you know when it's ready. You can still always check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud. Again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Click follow. Click subscribe. Click like. Just get on there. Find from the press box. Listen. Follow. Like. Subscribe. Do whatever. Get on it. Thanks again for listening. See you.